Mm -hmm. Hi there. So we are live with the speakers um, who presented um, on practical VoIP um, hacking using Mr. SIP. And um, welcome, welcome to DEF CON safe mode. Not, not quite what you would uh, normally have expected probably for coming to Vegas, right? But uh, <laughs> glad that you're able to join us and, and share some information with us. Um, I understand though that you are both uh, first time speakers at DEF CON, is that correct? Yeah, yes, correct. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so we have a um, tradition here at DEF CON for first time speakers where um, really it's, it's a historical tradition of where we kind of do a shot or a drink with someone on stage to kind of welcome them to, to DEF CON. So as your first time speakers, um, I'd like to, you know, hold up a cup and, and have, a, have a drink here with you both and say cheers and say welcome to DEF CON. Okay. Yep. Yes, cheers. Ready? Yep. Cheers. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> that was strong. A <laughs> little, little early where you are. <laughs> strong coffee. <laughs> awesome, oh. awesome. Yeah, so that's great. So let's um let's get into a couple of the questions and everything. Um, first off, um, right. So we recorded the talk a little bit ago. Um, really, right. Mm -hmm. Like since you since you recorded and kind of presented on Mr. Sip here at um, DEF CON, mm -hmm. is there any major changes or updates you kind of want to share with the uh, with the audience? Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, um, so inside uh, this presentation, DEFCON, we actually show uh, most of the new updates. So they were not published before. So exclusively, we presented uh, many other modules and all these demos. They are all new, and uh, we first time showed them in DEFCON. Since the video published, like in a week's time, uh, we are still updating the documentation and the YouTube channel we have. Twitter page we have, uh, people can follow, and the GitLab page uh, we use to host the website for the pro version. So these are the recent updates, we can say. But other than that, the whole DEF CON experience is the new update. So everything we show is the new content, all these pro features, the new modules. They were not published before, and then uh, right now we just uh, introduced them. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, um, Kind of, I guess, also to kick things off here. So, kind of, what drew you to like VoIP research and SIP security, and like, kind of, what's the origin for Mister SIP? Mm, okay, that's that's a big question. I think, uh, maybe I would like to answer that. And if you would yeah. like to add something after right. that, you're welcome. Uh, so, Mister SIP goes back to 2011, and one of our meeting with Meli also goes back to one of uh, like. 2012 or 2013 interview because like once I had a job application in Melik's company and he was interviewing me but there was no ship that time but that is just once we came uh, to meet each other and around that time so Meli was working for a re big telecom company one of the biggest in the world and they had the SIP team and security team there they were developing one internal tool and with that internal tool they were also hiring somebody uh, like a research supporter. And then in 2012, uh, I think they didn't have NDA and uh, one of that guy who was not hired forked the project and also uh, published some open source modules, but it, I think the project didn't go too deep uh, because it doesn't have any, like also that's a comparison, I think we can say it doesn't have any uh, novel or unique uh, exploits vulnerabilities inside, but Mr. Sid, stands out that it is um, both scientific and practical. It has uh, like, it is it is very interdisciplinary, I would say. So it is the, uh, it has full automatic uh, modules that does all the vulnerability search, but then in the real world attacks, it, it is utilizing novel exploits, CVEs that is uh, even just not published before it, Mr. Sip. So it contains a lot. Uh, if you compare with other things. But um, if we go back again, 2012 to 2015, Meli worked on a closed source project, different version of Mr. Sip that was kept always private and closed in the, under the company. And by 2015, Meli left the company and he was thinking. And by coincidence, we met in Black Hat, London, 2016. We said, oh, hi, you interviewed me four years ago. And then we said, oh, how's it going? He said, oh, I quit that company, etc." 
And then this was the story. We said, okay, what is happening? Mr. Sip, like he said, I want to program it from scratch, uh, make it bigger, like like make it like Burp Suite. You know, they, we had the uh, idea that we could make it just like a real uh, application that every pen tester, penetration tester is using. So that was a dream in 2016. Nowadays, after four years, we have about 10 modules. It is becoming a reality. Uh, so we work hard on those uh, programming, software engineering, because it is a big project. It is not one time uh, published application, but it's evolving all the time. And we have lots of lots in the roadmap. First, uh, it appeared uh, many times in arsenals, Black Hat arsenals, so, and some other uh, technical conferences, practitioners conferences. And also, uh, Mary published several uh, research articles during his PhD. Uh, so Mr. Sip actually gave him both, a, I would say, almost like a startup company and a PhD. So that, that there are a lot of, I think, uh, let's say, um, like events happened through the history of Mr. Sip. It is not a small application. Like it has several journals behind a PhD work, like a four years of PhD work. Um, plus it is becoming almost like a startup, but uh, the main idea is that we keep it open source and we want to, uh, we want community to use it and see that how SIP is important, VoIP attacks are important and how they can just have a reliable tool. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. There actually yeah. is a question in the chat about um, why does the website for Mr. SIP Pro require signing into GitLab? Is that maybe one of the oh, older ones or? Oh, it is. I think not ready. That's why. So. We didn't want Google to index uh, something that is like a demo content because we have a template now imported in GitLab and it is getting updated. We are keeping it, but we didn't want to show it uh, half missing. So it is just ongoing. It's very new and we wanted to include the links because the DEF CON video will remain online and maybe next week it will be uh, open, the website, the Mr. Sip Pro website. But Right now, it is still uh, ongoing. That's why uh, it requires sign in. Even if you sign in, it will say you're not authorized. So, but yes. I think I'm happy if people go and sign up to GitLab. GitLab is cool. Uh, like cool. It's free and it allows a lot of things. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll but, move on to but, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Oh, sorry. I was just saying <laughs> sorry ahead. for those users that uh, who's trying to get into the website. I'm sorry that we are. They're struggling because of this. Sorry, I interrupted you. Keep no, going. Good. You're good. No, that shows interest, right? It's good. Everyone's excited. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so another question from the chat. Um, so, you know, hey. if you're aware that someone's going to use an attack, you know, using Mr. Sip, so imagine you're on a blue team, right, or like, you know, in the SOC, mm -hmm. you know, what would you suggest as the first line of defense to protect yourself or your company? Hmm. Um, I think, like, Okay, I will say something maybe, but feel free. I take the uh, first sentence and feel free to add after me. Um, I think to when they do penetration testing uh, inside the company, like let's say they are using Mr. SIP uh, and they are trying to find vulnerabilities and all uh, tests. One of the defense they could do is like we also mentioned in the presentation that awareness, the password policy awareness. So usually, uh, it is the lowest priority in the companies and security policies. And a strong password policy is really necessary. But when we look at SIP itself, it is vulnerable. So there are some uh, some of the aspects that are unavoidable, like that. there will be VoIP attacks and there will be almost no defense if you deploy a com uh, like a sophisticated attack. So there is not much to do, but they could do the standards like monitoring and actively, you know, having some security researchers looking at things and lots of awareness, I think, inside the company, strong policy for passwords. Uh, all these things are, I think, good for defense. But I'm not sure. Uh, maybe you want to add something, maybe? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Using uh, wave specific security parameters like uh, wave application mm -hmm. firewall or uh, Web uh, IPS should be mm -hmm. beneficial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Appreciate that. Yeah. So um, mm. we'll go one other question here. 
Um, right, so if you have a lot of experience, obviously, looking at kind of SIP and VoIP attacks and everything, um, would you say mm -hmm. that there's any device or companies out there you'd recommend over another to kind of do a better job of protecting against, like, the style of attacks that are in Mr. SIP? Okay. I think I will uh, give this question to Meli by adding some on that. So maybe when we recommend or think about the company, it is the client applications and the server applications we can talk about. I would think they are mostly uh, similar, but maybe uh, what do you think about the companies like SIP servers or other uh, companies deploying SIP products? What do you think about them? Uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't get the exact question, but uh, mm -hmm. could you please summary it? Yeah, uh, like I think uh, what I think is, so at the end, our attacks are against the SIP protocol. It is not for products. And I think every product is vulnerable over there. So it is not product-based thing. Uh, also because I think inside the clients or servers, they don't have any uh, any uh, defense de defense mechanisms deployed in the servers. So they have to get uh, additional uh, defense mechanism. But Mili, uh, what I'm thinking is, do you have more experience on that. Uh, what do you think if any SIP servers, some brands or products, are better than other ones? Do you recommend any of them? Um, it's not appropriate to say, uh, to uh, no, bring fine. some vendors to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, no worries, no worries, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah so, so for someone who's mm -hmm. kind of, let's say, you know, isn't as familiar with the SIP space or the VoIP attacks, um, right, maybe they're more you know, used to using some of the standard, you know, things against Windows or Linux. You know, I guess how would you recommend mm -hmm. someone start to learn and kind of experiment or, you know, come into, you know, what kind of resources would you recommend for someone starting to look at like SIP or VoIP style of attacks? Mm -hmm. Other than just saying I think use the Mr. Big... SIP. <laughs> Other than what? Other than just saying use Mr. SIP. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I think uh, one of the things they can definitely deploy the environment, right? The lab environment where they can uh, mm -hmm. simulate or emulate the SIP servers and the client. So they can have, because so nobody has this all SIP deployment at home, but every company has it. So my university at Oxford, we have this uh, SIP servers to clients and uh, it would be really easy, I think, to hijack the professor's phone and then do these things. But at the end, for a new starter to experiment it, it is not going to be possible to deploy or have a SIP deployment at home. Nobody does that. But uh, they can definitely emulate something on their computer. And there are uh, many tools for that, that they can start generating SIP messages on their local server. And they can run virtual machines. So you take some virtual box, few instances. One of them is server. It has an IP address. Other one is few clients, etc. And then one, imagine one virtual box is calling another one. And while doing so, you have another virtual box, which is Kali Linux. And then this one is the attacker machine, gets access to the network and they can play with it. So they can watch the start watching the network me messages and play with it. I think new beginners could do that. And that would be fun. Yeah, also uh, reading uh, the first uh, SIP RFC is uh, very beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, as a virtual uh, CPVX, they can use any kind of asterisk-based uh, CPVX, such as uh, Trixbox or FreePVX, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So there's a yeah. there's a question in the chat um, from mm -hmm. RPTK 2015. Um, can you ex expand a little bit about wholesale VoIP um, carrier voice and call shop? Uh, kind of the attacks that were mentioned in the talk in context of mm -hmm. registration hijacking. Yeah. So I would like to give some quick summary on that because it is a real uh, incident, first of all. And Meli was also one of the investigators and, you know, like an expert, like preparing technical reports on it, like in a real uh, million dollar hacking. So they found out how the hackers did it. And now also in DEF CON, we showed how they did it. So what happens is the steps are simple, I think. Um, so the hackers should get into the company network. That is, I think, one of the preconditions. And then 
uh, with using Mr. Sip, they can enumerate the users, break the passwords, get into uh, the, or collect all the user uh, credentials. That is the step. And that is not difficult by using Mr. Sip. Everything is automatic. Once the hackers uh, collect in enough information about the users, what they do is that they can start selling whenever the users are sleeping or not using their uh, lines or the accounts, let's say. The hackers can start selling their accounts and just charge all these things into the company because company has the infrastructure that's running. And if they allow uh, calls to, let's say, other countries, uh, hackers can just, without running any infrastructure, telecom infrastructure, they can just charge them and make calls on behalf of all, all these stolen uh, users. And at the end, maybe three months later, the company will realize, okay, there were all these fraud going on. They will detect, but it will be too late because the guys, the hackers will already make, I think, millions easily by selling few months of uh, utilizing this telecom infrastructure for a few months. So what they can do, they can, for example, run a local, tele, uh, local phone call shop Imagine one of the like corner shops that says, okay, you can make international calls. And they might be using actually one of the other big company infrastructure and underground, like maybe stolen credentials. And you still go and pay them and make the call. And it is maybe a long distance call, super expensive thing. And they charge small money, but because they don't pay anything for the infrastructure. And because everything is free in quickly uh, as much as they can, they uh, start selling those services and many other things. They are very creative, right? Very creative people. Uh, so the, that's basically it. So few months, I think it will take until a company realizes, okay, why our bills are much higher than usual or the traffic going on too much. And, and that will happen, I think. That is the story. Like that also, is how... Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. even if they understand that, uh, they need to uh, pinpoint the problem, exact problem. Because mm -hmm. they still don't know uh, about the fact. This is also a very common uh, hacking story in the real life. So I experienced a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Mili, can I ask you a quick question? So do you think uh, not only the telecom companies, I think the banks can have this, or what other type of companies can have this type of call fraud? Because if a bank has the infrastructure for their own use, and if they allow with the tip trunks uh, external calls, so they can also be the victim of this type of fraud, right? Yes, exactly. The banks and other companies. It's not only the telecom companies. So many yeah, any, other companies can suffer. Yeah. Any company, any enterprises uh, running voice over IP and uh, making mm -hmm. outbound calls to internet uh, can be vulnerable for that kind of attack. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have uh, another question from the chat from Thoughtseeker. Oh, great. Uh, do you recommend using session border controls in front of critical SIP infrastructure? Uh, well, mm -hmm. I, I can uh, reply this question. Yeah. Uh, SPCs, the session border controllers, are uh, very common uh, in internet service provider level uh, companies, not for enterprises, maybe. Uh, they are expensive as far as I know, but it's very beneficial. It's working like a SIP firewall, SIP application firewall. So it's uh, one of the um, best uh, SIP security uh, firewall type, I can say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so something else. Um, so just kind of pondering. Um, you know, what do you, what do you think is probably the most significant attack someone could kind of do using like SIP VoIP traffic? Like, you know, what do you think that maybe it would be the most impactful or significant thing you could see someone trying to do? Right. Well, uh, maybe do you want, do we want to answer that? Maybe I have some stories, I think, but we can both, uh, I think, elaborate on this. Uh, what do yeah, you think? Uh, in this service provider level, uh, there are many fraud, uh, fraud type attacks, but uh, for enterprises, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. telephony DOS is one of the most uh, powerful attack, uh, mm -hmm. most impactful uh, attack. So mm -hmm. yeah, there are many ki different kind of uh, 
keep telephony DOS attacks you can run using to voice over IP systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, so. In the uh, DOS denial of service attacks, uh, Mr. Sip is very skilled because we have uh, so many protocol level vulnerabilities being published and getting also published. And that is one of the area that Mr. Sip is very powerful. It has very unique novel attacks, built-in uh, modules. And by doing so, I would say uh, DOS is definitely one of the impactful, but at the same time, in, inside Mr. Sip, we have the um, advanced scenarios that where you wanna make an impact without knowing anything, full automatic scenario that you wanna attack to an infrastructure all these advanced uh, custom scenarios we have a like mechanism to write and uh, prepare your attack and then mr sip will automatically follow all the attack and you will not do anything but let's say you put a raspberry pi into the company network leave it there uh, maybe a month later nobody is there but it will begin an attack deploy the full automatic attack and any of those, imagine the fraud infrastructure running, maybe you can build a VPN server inside, make a tunnel outside and play a lot with this. And then anytime you wanna distract people, you can uh, place a DOS attack and any other stuff, I think. Yeah, we, have, uh, mm -hmm. we couldn't have a chance to make demonstration for our um, attack scenario player, uh, but it's the mm -hmm. uh, module of uh, Mr. Sip, new module of Mr. Sip. Mm -hmm. And we have added some predefined attack scenarios, including uh, DDoS, telephony DDoS uh, type of attacks. And one of them mm -hmm. is like, uh, just by sending one in, uh, SIP invite message, we can occupy the SIP server for uh, 64 seconds. I just mm -hmm. uh, gave theoretical information about that kind of attack which was a novel attack uh, and we have uh, published it uh, in our academic research papers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're coming near the end, um, but uh, oh, yeah. yeah, is there anything in particular you really wanted to add that you kind of ran out of time to, to cover in the talk? Any, anything you really want to make sure you share with everyone here? I think I would recommend everybody and all the SIP community to support and give us the feedback. That is one of the important things. Uh, because Mr. Sip is not a one-time tool, it's evolving. And last four years, I think we showed the good progress. And in next few years, there will be a lot of new modules and novel attacks coming up because our roadmap is huge. Even though we yeah. still like, say some of the parts, like, I know uh, what Meli has and we discuss all the night. It is a, like the, we have the, we have huge abilities. We will uh, integrate, keep integrating into Mr. Sip, and we would like to say the, tell the community that they should definitely uh, follow and tell us how we can cooperate, how they can join. They are most welcome to help Mr. Sip and take a part, active role, and then so that we can make it better. But the 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 point that we should not miss is definitely follow and communicate because there are a lot coming. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so the last last kind of question, I guess to wrap things up. So if, if folks want to, to learn more, right, or want to contribute, like you were saying, you know, what's the best way for them to kind of reach out? Kind of what's the what's the best contact? Like do you, is it through the GitHub or Twitter or what's your preferred means of communication? We, we can share mm -hmm. shared links as well in the chat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so definitely uh, GitHub is our uh, first point of contact that we have the public version, open source version. The pro version is right now private. We are also open sourcing gradually the uh, pro version modules. They will get into the public domain at some point, but uh, GitHub is definitely useful. We have the links in the slide. Twitter is definitely a good contact. Uh, private mail address or Millie's personal uh, accounts, they are definitely good contact point. We are very active and we will likely not miss anything that anybody uh, uses any of the uh, point of contact in social media, Mr. Sip accounts, our personal uh, 
details, personal accounts, most welcome. I think if you don't mind, there is no official or like um, crazy <laughs> strict rules on how to reach, but just call it like easy. Uh -huh. Awesome. Amelie, awesome. do you want to add something on? Uh, I, I can add one more thing. Uh, and uh, people just asking about uh, demo and we will share uh, mm -hmm. new demo videos on our YouTube channel okay. most probably next week. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, I think that is very important that we should um, tell, yeah. Uh, because in the DEF CON video, I think the fonts were small. That was not mm -hmm. very readable. It's HD and high definition. If they actually watch HD quality, uh, they will see, they will be able to read everything. But we will also publish uh, the videos of all the modules and all these attacks, bigger fonts, maybe slowly in a better quality, uh, they will come and mm -hmm. we recommend that, I think. Definitely they should be watching the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I definitely think that'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Well, if there's no Thanks. last minute thoughts from either of you, uh, I would really just say thank you for joining us for, for DEF CON. Thank you for participating um, for, you know, remote places, again, not in Vegas. And, uh, yeah, and look forward to, to running into you in a future DEF CON, hopefully in Vegas in person. Uh, and otherwise, <laughs> just really want to thank you and, and, you know, stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hope yeah, we would like to thank everybody there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the DEF CON team helped a lot through this uh, online experience, uh, Pardus and Nikita and every everybody are taking role there. And thank you guys uh, for helping and arranging all these things, even in last minute that in all these uh, difficult times. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks. And again, everyone stay safe out there. Cheers. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Thank you.